Good morning, Booktube. This is Johnny. Thought I'd make a morning video since it's been. I think the last time I made a video, I was sitting in my main study. So, yeah, today is a Wednesday. We are now in the spring season. It is March the 21st. It is 7.59 in the morning. I'm s sitting here in the dining room, drinking coffee. There's nothing about coffee in the morning. So, writing in my diary. Uh, March the 21st, 2018, I'm on page 217. And uh, thought I'd just show the books I read in the mornings. Uh, I'm still, um, I am still reading uh, Echoes of Exodus, Tracing a Biblical Motif by Brian D. Estell. Uh, you know, I don't agree with this a hundred percent, but it's worth reading. And uh, still reading Paul, a biography by N.T. Wright. Uh, I still plan to do a video on this book. Uh, I have some thoughts. It's just getting my thoughts together. And uh, I got out last night a book I read off and on, Godly Prayers and Its Answers by John Brown of Wim Wampri. This is a, a reprint by Sole Gloria. It first was published in, I think, well, John Brown of Wampri, he was born around 1610 and he died in 1679. He was a, uh, I think he was a, uh, a Scottish minister. Uh, so I got that out again. And I was reading last night, Puritan Reformed Spirituality by Joel R. Beakey. I showed this book because I showed you I was uh, the the essay that Beaky wrote on the uh, the lives of Ebenezer and Ralph Erskine the centers with a cause because I still have on my desk the uh, works of Ralph Erskine in you know, a volume one of works of, I found out last night I was on the internet. And I wanted to find out if his brother's works, Ebenezer Erskine, had been re reprinted. And they have. The, uh, the Free, Presbyter Free Presbyterian Church of Scotland are the ones who publish, because uh, I think the Erskines was part of the founding ministers of this. Scottish Church, Free Presbyterians. Yeah, it says here, Ralph Erskine, 1685 to 1752. And so anyway, they just re this is this is, this set was published in 1991, and they just reprinted another six volume set, a reprint of the works of Ralph Erskine. So all those out there who want the works of Ralph Erskine, leave me a, a comment and I'll tell you how you can get them. So this is volumes one and two, volumes three, volume three, volume four, volume five, and volume six. I got these out again because as I mentioned, when I read, I kind of read wherever my spirit takes me, where I'm in a certain flow. And I just f felt like reading Scottish spirituality, Christian Scottish Christian spirituality from the 18th century. 
And uh, I do that once in a while. I mentioned that when I was in seminary, I took a class with uh, Dr. Douglas Kelly on Scottish theology, and I have been reading Scottish theology since, oh, 1979. Uh, a good book, this is a reference book I got out just to show, show you guys. This is Dictionary of Scottish Church History and Theology. Uh, organizing editor Niall M. D. S. Cambrian. It's a good reference book. I mean, they have like, if you look in here, they'll have uh, an article on the Earth Skines. Let me see. See, has, there's a big one here. Ebenezer Earth Skine. And then they have Ralph Erskine. They have John Erskine, who was their father. He was born in 1721 and died in 1803. Uh, so I see Ralph Erskine, 1780. No, excuse me, 1685 to 750, 1752. Then it talks about his life. Uh, it by his church work. Uh, yeah, so it talks about his works. So yeah, good reference book. So I did get out, I, I mentioned I had just one volume of Ebenezer Erskine's sermons. This is an old leather bound edition. This was published in 1836. This is volume one. Yeah, they, they did reprint the uh, Erskine's works in three volumes. For a, I'm going to look into maybe buying them for about $150. And... Uh, I'm not really sure because I have Ralph Erskine, so why should I buy Ebenezer Erskine? They're it's the same theology, same kind of spirituality, so I don't really, I'm not, I don't think I will. But I was mentioning in my uh, last video that uh, for many years I collected old Christian books, and I got one of them out last night. This is the one I, this is published in. 1848. Uh, when I was going into the, uh, when I was pursuing the gospel ministry, let's say, there were certain books that were famous for on ho uh, homiletics, uh, the history of preaching, uh, preaching, uh, things like that. And one of the books I came across was a book called An Earnest Ministry of the Want of the Times by John Engels James. And I went looking for it at and uh, used Christian bookstores and I, I found a copy of it. And this is the book. This was published in New York in 1848. This book came to my mind because when you talk about the Apostle Paul, he was called to be an apostle, but what he did, he was a, he was a preacher. That's what he did. He went out uh, when God called him on the Damascus Road. He, uh, if, you read, if you read the account there in Acts, it says uh, about the call of the Apostle Paul uh, after he uh, so when he received food he was strengthened and saw spent some days with the disciples at Damascus this is in chapter 9 of Acts immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God so immediately after his encounter with the risen exalted king of glory the lord jesus christ and uh, 
he preached Christ. Uh, it's interesting that it says he preached Jesus in the synagogues, where he preached the Messiah, that he is the Son of God. Now, when you see that, I did a study uh, last week about this phrase, the Son of God. Now, we're not to think of the doctrine of the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The Son of God idea, if you look back in that time period, in Second Temple Judaism and into uh, Jewish thought, the Son of God refers to kingship that the kings of Israel were called sons of God, small s, sons of God. So when it's, so what we have here, immediately he preached the Christ, the Messiah, the promised Messiah. All, if you, if you read, if you know your Bible, the Old Testament was always pointing forward to the coming of the Messiah, the Christ. But also it was coming, so when we talk about, for example, the importance of N.T. Wright. He says that with the coming of the Messiah, you have the end of the exile and the restoration of Israel. And that's uh, something that I really learned from N.T. Wright, is that when Jesus really was born, the Jews were still in exile they were still in captivity, even though they had been uh, three or four hundred, five hundred years before the birth of Christ, they had been set free from their Babylonian captivity that was prophesied and experienced in the Old Testament. But they were still under captivity. They were under the, the, the rule of, of the Roman Empire. And so when Jesus was born, he came to set his people free. He was to bring about a new exodus, a new deliverance. That's why this book is important, Echoes of Exodus. And so, not only was Paul and his encounter there in Damascus Road came to see, came to realize by the power of the Holy Spirit and of God, that this Jesus that was crucified on the cross was the Messiah and that he was the promised king of glory, the king of Israel. It's interesting when you read the, the death of Christ, which we're coming to the time when we, at, the, at Easter, that um, it says here, when you read about the, the crucifixion of Christ there in the Gospel of Matthew. And he's, he's hanging on the cross. It says, Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads, saying, "Who, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. See, now we're not to... It goes here, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocking with the scribes and elders said he saved others he, himself. He cannot say, if he is the king of Israel, let him come, let him now come down from the cross and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. And even... The robbers who crucified with him reviled him with the same thing. See, he was the king of Israel, but he was the, but they didn't recognize him. The Jews, the leaders, the scribes, and the Pharisees didn't recognize, did not see his kingly glory there hanging upon the cross. They all they saw was a man being crucified, but he was dying there for the sins of sinners. And. Um, so yeah, so that's what we, we talk about Exodus, and we talk about the Restoration, and we talk about N.T. Wright. We're talking about the end of the exile, that Jesus, by his death on the cross, delivered his people. He brought about a new Exodus. He brought about the Restoration, not only of Israel, well, 
but of the whole world. He brought in the new creation. He, as the second Adam, he brought in a new creation by his death on the cross. But back to this book about the earnestness of preaching. If you read the Apostle Paul, he was earnest, he was zealous, he preached Christ. And, and that's what he did up until he was martyred by Nero in, uh, in the late 60s, middle 60s AD. So anyway, I just thought I'd share these thoughts with you on this Wednesday morning. I'm writing in my diary, reading Ralph Erskine reading Scottish Reformed Christian spirituality, reading the Exos, Echoes, Echoes of Exodus, Tracing a Biblical Motif, N.T. Wright, Paul, a Biography. This is a good book on prayer. That's why I got it out. Uh, I get it out once in a while and just glance through it. Can't go wrong reading Ralph and Ebenezer Erskine. It's a good book, Dictionary of Scottish Church History and Theology. So I just thought I'll show you these books, show you what's on my mind on this Wednesday morning. I hope you're having a good week. And uh, I do have uh, used books to show and what I have been reading in the afternoons, my non-Christian books. But I'll show those in another video. My wife uh, goes back to work tonight. So I might make another video today. I'm not really sure. But I'll sign off until next time. Bye.